What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got some very special guests right off the stage, right into this interview. And thank you again, uh, Big Frida. Appreciate you joining us. Clap it up. Um, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, again, thank you for the time. And, you know, with us at Finish Line JD, it's uh, Pride Month. So we definitely want to highlight some faces and uh, impactful people within the space. Last week we had Sue Bird, so now we have you. All right, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Oh. Happy Pride to everybody as well. You heard me. <laughs> cool, so talk to us about like what, what Pride Month means to you and uh, personally. You know, Pride Month for me is, you know, uh, a month dedicated to people stepping up for us in the LGBTQ community and being, you know, being yourself being loud and being proud, being unapologetic, you know, um, being a force to be reckoned with, being that you can go out into the world and, you know, be joyful and be happy and, and live your best life. You know, that's what pride is for me, you know, getting out there. And my mama, her favorite line was go out there and show them who you are. And that's what it's about for me and just living my best life. Absolutely. And I think, you know, importantly, is everybody feeling comfortable in their own skin. You know, I think about how it is today versus, let's say, a decade ago, and people were still kind of afraid to really show, you know, be who they are. And now I feel like it's way more, you know, accepted. I remember before a lot of like press would go out when someone would come out. And now it's just like a normal thing. And that's, you know, where I would like to see where it's just something that's a part of society, like breathing, you know. Most definitely. Because when I was growing up in the 90s, in the early 2000s, it definitely was not so accepted. And, you know, especially in the black community, everybody wanted to be hush hush. People were embarrassed if they had a family member that was gay. You know, people tried to, you know, beat it out of their family members and so, so forth and so on. And, you know, when the 2000s finally started to hit, things started to change. And I have been around to see the change yeah. and have been very proud of the acceptance that has been going around and people really opening their mind and opening their heart yeah. because we're all human beings and we all deserve to be equally, you know, uh, looked at and we all deserve love. Absolutely, yeah. And talk to us about your journey from like, you know, you just mentioned growing up in the 90s, to uh, how it is today for you in the 2020, well, 2020. Well, so for me, I grew up in a black Baptist church in gospel music and gospel was my safe haven you know i took church as my outlet to stay out of the hood and stay out for trouble in the hood yeah. you know my mom would always say you going to sunday school you going singing that choir i'm sending you out of town to go sing with the choir and so that was my passion and that was my 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 safe haven of growing up i also started to direct uh, my church home choir I also started to direct my high school choir and I sung with many more choirs in and around New Orleans. And it was a fun thing to do. And as my journey continued, I started to do bounce music in the early 2000s and things changed. You know, things were not so accepted being a, a black gay rapper that's coming out, you know, and, you know, for the most part, the girls loved us. You know, they were excited, they supported us. You know, but we still had trouble with the guys. And, you know, sometimes we had to stand up and, and fight for our rights and fight to be who we wanted to be. But over time and being consistent and being, you know, not backing down and not being fearful, um, things started to open up and things started to change. And people started to see that, you know, I wasn't going nowhere and that I was going to be, you know, that gay person that people can love and come up to and not feel afraid and feel comfortable with themselves. And so that was my big mission in New Orleans to help change some of the stereotype that we get when it comes to the black gay guy. And um, over time, you know, I just continued to work hard and my journey has been great for all as, you know, the transitions of people I've been in contact, the music I've done, you know, going into the mainstream, you know, stepping into the hip hop, different areas, and people really accepted me for who I am. And I'm proud to say that a lot of different artists have been able to come out, you know, from the different people that have set the tone and really opened up the door in the rooms for many other people to come. Absolutely. Yeah. You see that today with like many different artists who 
are open about who they are and still making music, still, you know, hitting billboard charts and things of that nature. That just shows, you know, the the growth, you know, we have as a community where yeah. now, you know, more accepted and people are cool with it, they don't judge or anything like that. So and more important, I'm looking forward to your journey as well, because you know, your story is still being written and you're doing amazing things. So thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. So I just want to touch on one point real quick. When uh earlier we talked about you know being gay especially in the black community so why do you think it's such like a a, a big thing within like the black and brown community when it comes to just being gay trans whatever the case may be I, I think that you know the black community we're so judgmental i think that we always want to judge the next person what the next person got going on what they're doing oh you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that instead of letting people be free and supporting people in whatever their journey may be. Everybody's not going to do the same thing. Everybody's not going to be the same person. Everybody's not going to take the same path. And I think we'd be so judgmental and so ready to lash out, especially with the social media platforms. We'd be ready to down the next person or what the next person have on or, or, or doing instead of lifting them up. So that's I think that's one of the biggest problems we have you know, and we got to stop the hate. We got to stop the hate. You know, we got to spread more love and stop the hate. That's what it's about for me. For sure, definitely. And for you, um, just coming out off your show, so uh, what do your fans have to look forward to as far as like music? So music wise, they have a lot to look for. I have a new project dropping at the end of the month um, called Big Beaver Energy which is my new EP. Uh, my first single is Betty Busted off it. Also, I have just dropped a uh, cover of Lady Gaga Judas from her 10 year anniversary of Born This Way. I also have a song coming up on the Space Jam uh, soundtrack and the movie. So I'm super excited. Up. Thank you, that, that, that is huge. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so appreciative of Space Jam's even letting the LGBTQ artists represent on this soundtrack. So that shows you how much things have changed from the 90s when, when you know, this was done with Space Jams compared to now in 2021. So I'm just grateful for all the things that's happening uh, in my life and in my career, music-wise. Definitely, yeah. Shout out to Warner Brothers, you know, uh, Spring Hill Space Jam for making that happen too. That's a, that's a great look. Thank but you. Thank you. A different audience and you know, different people tapped into the music. Yeah, and, it, and it, then the song is hard. Like I went hard. I went back to being like in my kid days mm -hmm. and back to the 90s with the old Space Jams. And so the song is hard and people are going to love and, and see where it goes. For sure. And lastly for you, last question. I know uh, we make a donation on your behalf to a charity. So um, you mentioned No Kid Hungry. So tell us about, you know, the work that a uh, foundation has been doing within the community. You know, No Kid Hungry um, is an uh, organization based out of New Orleans and they help kids who don't have meals. And all you have to do is text a number and they will make sure that your family is provided with meals. And they have also grown outside of New Orleans and trying to help other regions down in the South. So No Kid Hunger is definitely one of the organizations I support in New Orleans and that's my babies. I want to never see no kids looking for a meal or can't find nothing to eat. Definitely, you know, you definitely don't want to see no kids going to bed hungry and, you know, even just- Not at all. Figure out where that next meal is coming from. But um, yeah, I know you just finished performing. I know you're ready to either go back out, take a nap, whatever the case may be, but- No nap right now, I'm too turned up for a nap. You know, the energy <laughs> in the room was amazing. Like it was, you know, a chance to get back out on stage and get back in front of the audience. And the people energy was just crazy. I'm excited to see the journey that the shows are going to take me on with coming back out of COVID and people being locked up for the pandemic. It was some great energy in the room and the people just, they had me in tears tonight. And I was just so grateful that everybody that came out, it, 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 was, it was mind blowing. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing what music can do, you know, bringing people together. Yeah, and especially now since we've all been on quarantine for like over a year and things. Are yeah, and I've been that queen 
bringing people together through the power of ads. You heard me? <laughs> That's me right there. I'm that queen that I make. Get about. <laughs> love it. Love it. Cool. But again, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with us at uh, Community Voices, JD Sports and Finish Line. Anytime, anytime. I appreciate you guys for having me. I just want to say happy pride to everybody out there. Continue to be yourself, be loud, be proud, and be unapologetic about who you love, who you are, and where your journey may be. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you again. Such a great conversation. Thank you. I appreciate it, Omar. No problem.